is now half past ten. And time for our meeting as a church again. As we draw near to God in worship this morning, let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us open hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn will be Angel Voices Ever Sing. without end, in our midst and with us. <coughs> God is with us, here we find new life. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed, hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for our time of confession. We come into the presence of God to bring before him all our regrets, and failings and our missed opportunities. Sins that we have committed and sins committed against us. Confident that Christ comes to heal and give us a new start. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, let us stand to sing the Gloria.
Today is the third Sunday of Easter, the special collect prayer for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sit for our first Bible reading. The reading is taken from Acts 9, verses 1 to 20. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, yes Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now in a troubled world we remind ourselves that it's Christ who is Lord and who is in charge. We stand to sing Majesty, our second hymn. Majesty, worship his majesty. Oh. 
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. <coughs> Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. <laughs> he said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise yes, to you, Lord Christ. And let's bow our heads to pray. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Amen. A friend of mine was once talking to me about stress and they said the trouble with life is it's so daily you know those times when you would rather pull the duvet over and turn over and stay in bed life is stressful picture this
seen in your mind's eye. A person is at home, uh, the television is on, but it's on mute because the person wants to listen to the radio. The radio is turned up loud because they're listening to radio while at the same time doing some vacuuming. <laughs> Their phone rings and they answer, and also while answering the phone, realised that uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok, and all the rest of it needs checking. And then, because of the noise of the radio and the vacuum cleaner, the baby starts crying. The, bo the doorbell goes and the dog starts barking. Modern life is stressful. Maybe you've had times, and maybe times at the moment, where you're keeping all the plates going and uh, some are getting a bit wobbly from time to time. Often, we want to escape. The trouble with life is it's so daily. We want to get off and rest for a while by maybe doing something familiar, wandering in the garden for a bit, doing a bit of retail therapy around the shops, or just simply relaxing with a cup of tea, something to relieve that stress and constant busyness. Well, the disciples were a bit like that. They'd been through an extremely turbulent time. They'd <coughs> cheered Jesus entering into Jerusalem after following him for three years with all the expectations around that. They expected Jesus to be king, but he was arrested, betrayed, and executed. And now they see him again from time to time. What did it mean? Had it really happened? And what about us who deserted and denied him? What was our future? Well, let's go back to fishing, says Peter. Let's rewind the clock. Let's forget all this happened and let's go to something I'm familiar with, fishing. It's easy to say we want to take a break and begin again. Maybe turn over a new leaf and do something differently. Sometimes we think, yes, I'm, I'm really going to be do better. I'm really going to change. But it's a bit like a snake when it sheds its skin. You know, the old habits go, but we're still kind of the same person, the same difficulties, doubts and failures as we had underneath. And again, a bit like the disciples. All night they laboured and they caught nothing. I wonder if Peter thought, I can't even do this now. I've tried to be a disciple. Jesus said I was going to be something great. I tried to be fishing again and I can't even do that. He must have felt completely like giving up. But the wonderful news of the gospel today is that Jesus hasn't given up on Peter and doesn't give up on us and on his church. He falls us and he calls us. He constantly calls us day after day. And maybe that call of Jesus is continuing today and this week and he is standing on the shore of our lives waiting for an answer as he stood on the shore for those disciples. For us as Christian believers, there's the potential that we can really change. We're not just shedding the snakeskin, we can change and we can grow as individuals and as a church. We can let go of the past, our failures and weakness, we can genuinely be forgiven, as Peter was, three times to repeat those three denials. Peter and the disciple who Jesus loved recognize that the stranger on the shore is Jesus. It's unusual, all the different resurrection appearances of Jesus. It is Jesus, but it's not Jesus. They don't quite go together. There must be something mysterious about his risen presence. And again, for us, it's not always easy to recognize Jesus. Those of us who were here last week were thinking about Thomas saying, my Lord and my God, when can we repeat those words? When do we recognize the presence of Jesus with us? And it's important for us to tune in to his presence because he's closer than we think. Again, if you remember Suzette on Easter Sunday talking about her first cup of tea of the day, she's made that a cup of tea with God when she'll listen and be silent and pray and be with God. So what are the ordinary things 
that uh, reveal Christ to us. That if we've got our eyes open, we can say, yes, my Lord and my God, you are here. The smell of a cup of coffee, bird song, the feel of running water, remind us that Jesus is not far away, but close. Just as those disciples, the smell of the barbecued fish, the sound of the water lapping up on the lake, would all be reminders of the presence of Jesus for their lives. As well as being forgiven, we are accepted as the friends of Jesus. And we have a plan for our future, for us as individuals again, and as a church. Jesus tells Peter to feed his sheep. We are called to, to show the love of Jesus <coughs> in action. Who around us, who do you know, needs a bit of feeding and a bit of tending? Jesus says this to Peter. Peter of all people. Jesus said to Peter early on, you're going to be the rock. And he now repeats that call to Peter to be a leader. Even though time after time, Peter puts his foot in it and fails. Early on he says to Jesus, go away from me Jesus, I'm a sinful man. He tries to tell Jesus about the best way of fishing. We tried it that side, but only if you say so, we'll try it the other side. He recognised that Jesus is Messiah, but then he says, no, Jesus, you're not going to suffer. That's not going to happen to you. And Jesus rebukes him. And apparently the word rebuke is the same word that Jesus uses when he's casting out demons. Peter gets a right telling off, and deservedly. And then in the Last Supper, up in that upper room, it's Peter who refuses to have his feet washed. But Jesus sees the real Peter Underneath all that, he looks past those uh, outbursts, those weaknesses, and, their fa and those failings, and sees the real Peter. And Jesus sees the real you and me, too. I love that story of Michelangelo, who was uh, chipping away at this huge lump of marble, and somebody asked him what he was doing. He said, I'm rescuing the angel from this piece of rock didn't say I'm carving an angel, he said there's an angel inside here and I'm rescuing it. And uh, the love of God perhaps uh, chips away our awkward bits and our failings to reveal who he wants us to be. And so Jesus calls us as he calls Peter. We are not disqualified. What is round the corner for each of us and for St Michael's Church? I think at St. Helens uh, last year in a sermon, I mentioned one of my cherished memories of my previous parish, and it was the last confirmation candidate. It was a woman called Linda in her 40s who hadn't been baptized and confirmed, and she, she found faith. And she had to tell people at work that she was going to be baptized and confirmed. And one of her uh, colleagues rather sneeringly said to her, Oh, have you found God then? And Linda said, No, God has found me. Brilliant. The most important thing of all is that question, Do you love me? Jesus asks each of us, Do you love me? Being a Christian is not just being religious, not misbelieving certain facts in our head and repeating them out loud. It's friendship with Jesus Christ. Know that the past is forgiven, to know that he is with us each day, and to know that he calls us into a, a future to live in companionship with him and in service for him. Amen. Let's bow our heads to pray. Lord Jesus, please be gracious to me as you were to Peter. For I have sometimes denied you in my heart and in my relationships, in my way of life. I have not lived as though I loved you, and yet I do, I really do. Call me by name, as you call Peter, that the sound of your voice may quieten my fears and restore my confidence. Wherever my journey takes me, whatever I am called to do, 
However many times I fall down, Lord, hold out your hand to me and be by my side every day, every moment and every step. Amen. So Jesus calls us as he called Peter. So let's respond to his call by renewing uh, our affirmation of belief. This is on page six. Please stand. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Please sit for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. Lord, we continue to pray for our parish that the right person will come forward to lead us as rector. Thank you for the ongoing work of all who are trying to cover this position in various ways. And in our own church, we especially thank you for Simon, Paul, Roger, Keith, Merrill, Bruce, and Andrew, who work so hard to enable us to continue to function. Please give them all your strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our government and ask that our leaders will act with wisdom and compassion in all their decisions. We ask for your help for all who work for reconciliation in our own country and throughout the world. Please be with all whose lives have been devastated by war and civil strife. And we particularly ask for an end to the brutality and unbearable suffering of the people of Ukraine. Lord, we know that you alone can comfort and heal. And we cry out to you for your divine intervention in this terrible conflict particularly asking you to continue to give President Zelensky the strength and resolve he so much needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for your help in stabilising our climate and ask that you give each of us accountability and wisdom in tackling this problem. We pray for all who are living in poverty or under oppression and for the aid agencies who are showing the light and hope of Christ in their work. We also pray for our Queen and ask that she will be given happiness and joy as she prepares for her platinum jubilee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our homes, friends and families and all whom we love and all who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. Today we are especially praying for Carol and Stuart, Eileen Gilbert, Kate Banfield and Bridget. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for any known to us personally.
Lord, give them and their carers your peace and strength and the feeling of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Today is the anniversary of death of Ethel Tooley, Kathleen Mills, Mary Stevens, Dorothy Ward, Connie Middleton, and Thelma Challens. Let them rest in peace and please comfort their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that today and the following week may be holy and peaceful and full of your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus came and stood among his disciples. He showed them his hands and his side and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also also with you. From our places, let us offer one another a sign. We're going to sing our third hymn now, God Forgave My Sin in Jesus' Name, number three. Saying, 
This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with Michael and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit as we continue in prayer. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Very warm welcome to you all. Right, masks. Why are some wearing and some not? Uh, we have made a decision in the background of declining numbers of COVID cases that it is now optional. Right. Um, I think we should say congratulations to Angela. And she's probably wondering for what. Yeah. <laughs> well, she had a very long reading to make. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand then as we prepare to receive God's blessing. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you 
and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.